Risk is a way of life for a game changer, and you have to show commitment in the face of disappointment. This certainly changed the ultimate outcome for Lloyd Lele, but something that hasn't changed is his love of Indian cuisine. Following on from his successful debut album, One, Lloyd Kele went on to release No Limits. This title turned out to be quite prophetic because his third album, Grey Matter, achieved simultaneous radio playlisting of three new singles in three different languages. A young talent comes from nowhere and despite all the odds he makes it to the top. That's the usual plotline, but is that the case in real life? Lloyd Sele was the runner-up in a major reality show and he used his second place as a platform for success. Zaki had no difficulty finding Lloyd at the venue. She simply followed the music. It is an absolute pleasure to meet you. Likewise, huh? It's good to finally meet you. Why don't I sing and maybe you can dance? <laughs> Lloyd, your life has changed completely thanks to your performance in a reality show. Did you ever think this would happen? Not at all, you know. Um, I actually took a chance, you know. I, I decided after my friends and everybody else and my family kept telling me that, Lloyd, why don't you go and try out for the show, you know? I woke up that morning and I knew the auditions were on. And I said, well, let me just go. And I'm not going to tell anybody. Let me just take a chance and let's see what happens. You know, and I think it came at a perfect time as well because I, was, I wasn't doing very well financially and I was really struggling. <laughs> I was doing IT and I was also doing photography. I was trying to get my hands on many things, you know. Um, so I, it came in at the perfect time for me. And I was really frustrated because I wanted to do music more than anything else. And I used to sing at restaurants as well. So I was really just trying to, to, uh, to get a breakthrough, you know. So I'm glad that it finally took a, I took a chance. That's what it was. I just literally took a chance and it worked out for me. <laughs> what came before? Tell us about your family, your background, the people who inspire you. There's many people, you know, who've really been um, instrumental in my life. My mom had me when she was 18 years old. We were staying in Guamashu back then. And, um, and then she was too young to take care of me, so she literally left me with my, in my granny's arms and, um, and she had to go back to school. And my granny became like my mom to me and my grandfather as well became like my dad. Um, and then after a few years, we decided to, to relocate to Phoenix. Um, I think at about the age of about 10, 11 years old. And, um, and, and it was so incredible to, to make that move because, you know, the family really started getting together. My mom really started coming into the picture as well. She was now old enough to start taking care of me. And uh, so my granny and my mom have been one of my greatest role models for me. Phoenix has played a huge part in your life. Tell us more about that. Yeah, Phoenix has really been um, a great and a major part of my life. Um, more especially the church and the community, you know, the church that I grew up with. That place became a foundation for me, a preparation phase for me to be able to do what I'm doing now. Because, um, you know, to be able to do what we do, you, you need confidence, you need to be bold, um, you, you really need to be able to be grounded as well, you know, where you know who you are, you know where you're going. So they gave me a lot of those tools, if I can put it that way, and a lot of that foundation um, for me to be able to, to to, to go out wherever I may be and, 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 and do what I do to the best of my ability. But um, I think I'm getting kind of thirsty having to talk all the time. Maybe we can get something to drink. But first, you have to teach me the tune. I'm gonna teach play. you something? All right, cool. Very easy. You're gonna play uh -huh. one, two. Okay. Can you do okay, that? Okay, okay. You keep that finger there. Oh, oh that one. That's the last one. Okay. Right. That's that one. It. Yeah. <laughs> What you just did now, you make it easy for me to love you. Tell us a little bit about your music. How would you describe your style? My style of music is, um, it's, it's a mixture of, um, of genres, of pop and R&B. Um, you know, my latest album is called Grey Matter and my passion is really to unite people through music 
And I feel like everything that has happened in my life and even, you know, being married, I'm really proud to be married to somebody outside of my race. Um, she's Indian and I'm black. And I feel like even in my music, I'm, you know, I sing in three different languages. I sing in Isuzulu, in English and in Afrikaans. And for me, it's all about embracing the diversity of who we are as South Africans. And, and I feel this is my way of having to fight the struggle of racism through music. Now I have to ask, you and your wife Janice come from different cultural backgrounds. How did you meet? Janice and I, we met um, actually at a church. It was at a youth club and she came over and um, strangely enough, I noticed her legs and I think she has the most beautiful legs ever. And, and I plucked up the courage to go up to her and, uh, and I told her, well, you know, this is who I am. And uh, before you know it, we had so many similarities. Uh, she, sings, she sings, she plays the guitar, she plays the drums. Um, you know, she's really passionate about a lot of things that I'm really passionate about as well, uh, despite the fact that we come from two different race groups. Would you say that your different backgrounds have enriched your life? Absolutely, the different backgrounds have really enriched my life in so many different ways. As a human being, as a person, I've learned to really respect other cultures, not just the Indian culture, but any culture that's out there. And I think, you know, sometimes we often miss the mark of having to show genuine love towards other people. What's your favorite Indian dish? I have a few dishes that I, that I, I can never see my life without, uh, especially biryani. Um, you know, I can never see myself without having roti with kebabs, um, you know, dalgos. Um, you know, it's, it, what else? The chicken palau, I love chicken palau. Um, with biryani, mutton is my favorite and it's got to have dal with it and some sambals and uh, a little bit of pickle. And uh, my favorite pickle obviously is mango pickle. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I can't stop thinking about biryani after you mentioned it. Oh yeah. Should we go grab a bite? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Lloyd is spreading his wings as a stage performer by taking the title role in a dramatized version of the life and times of the Prince of Motown, Marvin Gaye. How do you feel about playing Marvin Gaye? I was like, yes, I was very excited. I mean, um, even up to now, I can't believe that, you know, I, I have such an incredible honor and a privilege you know, to sing the songs of the legendary Marvin Gaye. So the role will be demanding acting and singing. How do you feel about this challenge? I really am looking forward to it. You know, I'm somebody who loves challenges. I uh, love to, 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 to try new things, um, you know, and uh, I think this is going to be a great opportunity for me to grow. Lloyd, thank you so much for sharing your amazing journey with us. I look forward to working with you very soon. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Sele is someone who doesn't look for instant success, but he does believe in making the best of every opportunity. He's shown that you can always be a winner, even if you come second, as long as you're never satisfied with giving second best. You're